Now, therefore, as we are talking about the second foundation pillar, which is the Holy Spirit and particularly, of course, His leading, so the leading of the Holy Spirit, and it will prevent you from falling into a trap. Um, of course, people that are in need of deliverance and inner healing, they have a lot of issues, they have a lot of trouble, they have a lot of problems, but... Remember, commitment is something that each and every person can do because that is the heart. And the Lord looks upon the heart. He that looks upon the hearts of man. The Lord will know whether that heart is sold out for Him despite of the problem, despite of the demons, despite of the, of the, of the tribulation. And that is why you need to be linked up to the Holy Spirit because you cannot cast your pearls before swines. You cannot waste your time of which you are to be a wise steward. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. Redeem the time because the days are evil. And there are many more scripture references in the Bible that teach us that we have to be a wise steward and also a wise steward of our time. One of the gifts that God gives us is time. What can we do with the time? We can waste the time or we can effectively use that time to do and bring forth good fruit. So we have to be a wise steward of time and you are going to have to learn to say no to certain people or you have to learn to say not yet to certain people because you will find and I have fallen for this trap I have fallen for this trap several times and I have wasted time and I found out that those people they were not sold out for Jesus. They had not the correct motive. Their flesh, their mindset wasn't repented and they were not coming to Jesus for the right reasons. You can't come to Jesus because you want to get rid of nightmares. No, you come to Jesus for salvation. Remember, that is why we all, the, all these other teachings that I do Please listen to them. Please watch my sermons as the Lord. I'm a person who preaches under the unction of the Holy Ghost. And often a time I look back at my sermons and I say, wow, I never realized I said all these things. I never prepared this. It's the Holy Spirit speaking right through me. And I am not aware of it. And I have to look back at it. And you hear the Holy Spirit speaking. And that is because I learned to deny myself when it comes to the preaching of the gospel of the kingdom of God. When it comes to allowing self to die and making sure that self is dead. So that only the Holy Ghost begins to speak and teach and preach. And um, we got to know why people come to the Lord Jesus Christ. Then... Inner healing, restoration follows automatically. And then a minister is able to effectively minister. But those people that come to Jesus for the wrong reason or that come to Jesus for prosperity, oftentimes you're going to have to preach the gospel to them afresh. And then uh, listen very careful to the Holy Spirit whether they are truly in it for the right reasons are they are they are they have they really repented because if they have truly repented and a demon cannot prevent you to repent then you would you could waste valuable hours and energy and it would drain you because you're fighting a battle that that you can't win because of the rules of engagement because of the spiritual laws that are set by the Lord and he will not break his own laws as you heard in the previous teachings. And I don't, I'm teaching you this because I don't want you to fall in the same trap as I fell in a few times. Oh.
Also, remember, Satan, he can set up a tra trap by he doesn't mind to trade one victim for you to be totally occupied and have no more time for anything else because you are so busy and occupied with this one victim and bless their soul. But it is a trap because some people, Satan will just allow one person with that will just that he knows is a total time consuming person just to prevent you from reaching many more people and there are people and that is why again the leading of the Holy Spirit you have to have a confirmation in your spirit from the Holy Spirit whether you are a minister to the person or not and you continue that and if things don't are, are taking a lot of time then go into a time then then stop and go into a time of prayer and allow and a time of being still and know that I am God a time of listening don't always pray 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 and don't give God a chance to speak back to you it is a relationship he also wants to speak to you be silent be still and know that he is the Lord and rest and wait and let him confirm because sometimes you're gonna have to say no sometimes that is not the person God wants you to minister to that's not to say that the person is not gonna get ministered to and sometimes God has another so be led by the Holy Spirit because do what God wants you to do amen and God will confirm that he is well able he knows everybody and everything and he can he will lead the people to you but remember there is a devil out there who who can who can sometimes get you stuck on one person and that person will just drain if you're not careful all of your energy will suck the anointing and all the time and you will just be tired and have no energy of whatsoever for anybody else please don't fall for the trap learn to say no and learn to say not yet and remember oftentimes you have to preach the God afresh and preach righteousness and holiness and listen to the Holy Spirit are these people willing I know that because of the demonic problems they, they, there are certain things that they can't help. Maybe they are addicted and they need to be delivered from that, of course. And the, the, the addiction has a root and the root needs to be dealt with and that could be rejection. But the heart, how is their heart? The Holy Spirit will tell you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And if we, if we are talking about traps, one more thing I'll mention on the second element, the second foundation pillar. We've only got to the second yet, but we are definitely getting somewhere. Amen. The second, uh, another trap is be careful for this. Um, we'll mention it towards the end, explain more um, in, in uh, not to end of this particular teaching which is the five elements and then and then in the fourth one we'll talk about SRA SRA stands for satanic ritual abuse an SRA victim is a person who is the victim of satanic ritual abuse basically abuse from a cult a satanic cult um, some people were born into this terrible cult or their parents were Satanists and they have been abused and satanically um, abused, ritually abused and, and, and you can't imagine the stuff that they have went through um, from basically from they are in the womb. Now those people they need and crave for attention 
and um, you need to very be very careful. The Lord loves them very much, and they need to be restored, and they will be restored. But even myself, I pray, and sometimes the Holy Spirit would, would very clearly confirm to me and say, no, because I have another work for you. There is another person who will deal with this person. Because once people know that you are moving in your, um, in your gift of inner healing, restoration, deliverance, the word goes out quickly and people get to know about it. But the Holy Spirit will lead who you minister to. And, and the Lord has a work for each and every one of us. And sometimes he'll tell me no. Because if you was to get involved in this particular person's life and restoration of it, you simply will not be able to do all the other things that I command you to do, that I have in store for you, that uh, souls are attached to, and you, you just have to say no and leave it to me because the Lord, I the Lord, will then, he said, cause somebody else. There are people that I minister to on the phone every so often, but some people, they have been in such unfortunate situations, they would need hundreds of hours of ministry and then some. And um, it doesn't take one person, it takes several persons. And through intercessory prayer, let the Lord lead. Amen? So don't go your own way. Let the Lord lead it through His Holy Spirit. That's all for now on the second foundation, pillar, the second element, the Holy Spirit, His leading. Now we go to the third pillar, inner healing. Before we go and look at the third element or the third foundation pillar, the third one of the five pillars on which the restoration of a person is built upon. Hallelujah. And if it is built on a solid foundation, it shall last. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And that fits in with our objective, number one, the first pillar, the first element of restoration is to have the objective, the goal, to see the full restoration of that person through the power of the Holy Spirit in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, of course, the second pillar we know is now the Holy Spirit and the leading of the Holy Spirit. So everything is led by His Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. And everything is subject to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. So everything can be checked and verified constantly, whether it is in perfect line with the will of God, whether it is sound doctrine, because the Holy Ghost is in charge. Now, I want to take you quickly to three scriptures. Three scriptures in, in fact, all in the book of 1 Corinthians. Because I am teaching you many things in this online school of deliverance inner healing and restoration and furthermore we continue in advanced school of ministry online bible school it as you step out in faith as you deny yourself and pick up the cross and step out in faith for jesus christ to step out in the unknown and trust in Jesus Christ and to literally place your life into the hands of Jesus Christ because you don't know what is going to happen. 
but you're just going to step out in faith. That is when the Lord will begin to reveal the mysteries of His kingdom. That is when the Lord will begin to share with you as He is walking with you, as He is monitoring you, as He is seeing that you are seeking His face, that you are seeking His kingdom and His righteousness, that you are pressing in and that you are willing to go further and further for Him and, and for His glory and all unto Him and to further His kingdom in this terrible fallen world that we live in. But we are not of it. Praise God for that. We are only in it. Hallelujah. For a season. The Lord will begin to reveal things unto you. And that is explained by the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians. And I always say to people, when you get into this precious Word of God, this precious Holy Bible, and it is so holy, you will see that there are layers upon layers upon layers of depth and revelation in these Scriptures. As you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you and the Word of God tells us that the Holy Ghost is a teacher and he will teach you all things praise the Lord and he will begin to reveal unto you that what you need to know in your stepping out in faith in doing something for Jesus Christ now these mysteries are discussed by the Apostle Paul and it is important that I mention this in between step 2 and 3 or rather element or pillar 3 and 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 verse 1 1 Corinthians 4 verse 1 Let a man so account of us as the ministers of Christ and Stewards of the mysteries of God. God will reveal things, mysteries, and then makes ministers stewards of the mysteries of God. Those are the ministers that have been made stewards of the mysteries of God because the Lord has revealed the mysteries unto them. And as I have been sitting and patiently and moved by compassion, having the objective to see the person restored to the person God always meant them to be, for those over 1,000 people, and we're talking, those are just the, the in-depth, personal, individual sessions. We're talking thousands of hours. And many ministers and many brothers and many sisters have said to me, how can you do that? How can you sit there for hours upon hours with one person? Well, because I was moved by compassion and still am. And because the Lord Jesus Christ would leave the 99 to go after the one. And because of all heaven rejoices over the one sinner that repents. And that one person, restoration is very important to the Lord. Because he has an individual relationship with each and every one of his children. And... Because of that, because I was faithful with the little bit, God began to increase me. Not man, but God began to increase. And God began to exalt. And God began to use me for, if you like, bigger things. Not bigger in worldly terms or as nowadays apostate Christianity measures things, but 
in biblical sense. Reaching more people, going to more nations. But because I was obedient and faithful with the small, with the ones that he sent to me, he began to increase. And he began in that process revealing mysteries of how the spirit world operates, how demons operate, what demons are allowed, what demons are not allowed, what personality ulcers are, what um, soul trauma uh, means, to a per how, how he heals, how he restores, how he multiplies. And he is still revealing things on me and I'm still seeking after, after him every day. And I say, Lord, show me more. Keep me in perfect line, a plumb line, straight with the word and will of God the Father in Jesus' name. And show unto me everything that you want me to know. Keep me on the straight and narrow path that leadeth unto life. And, and you will see the same as you are faithful in doing that what the Lord gives unto you. He will move you on and he'll move you on and he'll begin to reveal things. And in that, he began to make me a steward of the mysteries of restoration, inner healing and deliverance. Let's look at another scripture in the same book of 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries. See, here is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says he is understanding all mysteries and all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, if I have not charity, which is agape love, I am nothing. See, here is the Apostle Paul explaining that he's actually had so much revelation that he's understanding all the mysteries. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the next chapter, also verse 2, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto man, but unto God. For no man understands him, how be it, in the spirit, he speaketh mysteries. This precious gift of the baptism, being baptized in the Holy Spirit and fire, gives us that gift, that spiritual gift, one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit, which is the gift of tongues, which is available to each and every one of us. And if we pray in the Spirit, if we pray in tongues, we speak mysteries. And at the right time, God will begin to reveal them. That's what we are allowed to know. That's what He wants us to know. He can reveal that. Praise God. Now, that was important for you to know because we need to base it upon the Word and you will now begin to read the Bible. As you, as you get this understanding and as you begin to learn and study and meditate um, everything that, that, that the Lord is presenting unto you, you will begin to read the Bible and you're beginning to get new revelation. Okay, the third pillar. The third big pillar on which restoration is founded is laid upon inner healing. The third element is inner healing. Inner healing is the biggest part of most of the restoration ministry sessions that you will encounter. Because inner healing heals all the brokenness, all the woundedness, all the bruises, all the battering, all the abuse, all the rejection, and which is most of the time 
the root for Satan to be there in the first place and having messed up these people's lives. So let's look a bit more in depth now to this third element, inner healing. What does the Bible say about inner healing? And why do we use the word inner healing? Well, the King James Version talks, as we know, about the healing of the brokenhearted. That is not literally, of course, a heart that is broken, because a heart that is broken could not pump. And uh, if that was literal, the person would not be alive. Their body would not be able to sustain life. But this is talking about the soul. This is the part of us being made in the image of God. This is the part of us. We are triune beings, body, soul, and spirit. And this is the part of the soul where the mind and the emotions are. And, and a broken heart deals with our inner self, it deals with our soul. In fact, the inner man, the real us, if you like, because this is just a temporary body in which we dwell in this earth. But we talked earlier on, we are a soul in a body. And when we leave this body of flesh and bones and blood, our soul, which is the real us, just carries on. And the Bible even talks about giving us a new body, which is a resurrected body, not powered by the blood, but powered by the spirit, not mortal, but immortal. And... Besides this body, we have a soul. We are a soul. And that is where most of the damage is being done. Even if the body is being abused, the, the bruises of the body heal, but the wounding in the soul stays. If a child is being battered and battered and they are hurting him and they are beating him or her, and, and it, is, it, it, is, it is abuse, the body will heal. And you'll say, well, especially a few years later, you can't see anymore anything on the body. But the soul is still wounded. The soul is still very, very wounded and broken and bruised. And there, the bruises are very visible. So, what does the Bible say? It talks about the inner man, literally talks about the inner man. Let's look at some of the scriptures where the Bible refers to the inner man. Um, we will look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16. Ephesians 3 16. That he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit. Spirit in the inner man. I'll read that again. That was a, a whole lot of words in one sentence. That he would grant you, give to you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. Praise the Lord. We know from 1 Thessalonians 5.23, we discussed that in the previous teachings, that we are body, soul, and spirit. I'll read it one to you one more time. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, the proof that we are a triune human being, as we are made in the image of God, who is also three in one, and the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Your whole spirit and soul 
and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The 23rd Psalm gives us that, oh, that awesome promise of having our soul restored. It, it promises so much and it, and it, and it is what, what we are standing upon, the Word of God. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I shall not lack any good thing, according to the 34th Psalm. The, lion, the young lions lack, but the righteous shall never lack, never suffer. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me into the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I shall fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Hallelujah. What a wonderful psalm. The 34th Psalm, 34, 18, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart. Again, there we have it. The Lord is close to them that are of a broken heart. He loves them. He wants to, he is close to them. He wants us to reach them and clean them up, restore them for his glory. The Lord is nigh. He is close unto them that are of a broken heart. Those that are bruised and battered and abused. Those that are rejected and reproved of. And saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And the word safe is the Hebrew word in the Old Testament. And it will stand for nothing broken, nothing missing. He wants total restoration. Total restoration for such as be of a contrite spirit. Psalm 34, 19. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. Isaiah 61, 1. We, look at the, we looked at the previous teaching and we saw that the Hebrew, when we look at the Hebrew language of that scripture, as it was also repeated and referred to in Luke 4.18, it talks about the restoration of the inner man. Hallelujah. So inner healing is a very large part because most of the people that need deliverance, they need restoration and that is inner healing and deliverance. And in my experience, and from the Word of God, I cannot separate deliverance from inner healing. There are people that don't need inner healing, but only need deliverance. But those are very few. Maybe because they are already healed. Maybe they have overcome that rejection. Maybe they have you know, through the years, they have, they have dealt with that. And the Lord has been dealing with them. And, and, and so, in fact, they have had a process of inner healing. And then when they come to you as a minister, you just need to cast out the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. But most of the time, you will find that there is still a soul wound. There is still something that the devil is holding on to and that needs to be. So this is very much following on the teachings, the first three teachings that are dealing with legal rights and strongholds. Soul wounds. A soul wound is basically a stronghold because it is an ungodly emotion where the devil holds on to. Amen? Legal rights. Under the leading of the Holy Spirit, make sure that the legal rights are repented of and that those doors are closed in Jesus' name. We'll do much more in-depth teaching on this, but we'll just highlight that what is most important. So we're building the foundation and then we carry on to the more in-depth 
and advanced teachings with examples, with footage of people that are going through ministry and we watch that together and I will teach you as we will pause it and look at what actually happened. We we'll might rewind and look back at it and we will, we, will, we will just begin to really see how the Lord has been dealing with these people and how it lines up with the scriptures. It is even said that 80% of people that are in real need of restoration, deliverance, need inner healing. They have soul wounding, they have trauma, they have, a lot of people have been rejected. A lot of people have been rejected and rejection is a big door the devil uses to come into somebody's life very early on and then he begins to, 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 to take them off the path that the Lord has for them and he puts them onto his path and that is the evil path of the devil. Now how do we go to deal with those soul wounds? How can we allow the Holy Spirit to come and to begin? How can we, how can we heal the broken heart in Jesus' name? How can we how can we do that? Now, uh, we do everything under the leading of the Holy Spirit. You've been praying for this person. You have been leading them into repentance. You have preached repentance, the gospel of the kingdom of God, righteousness, holiness, and the need to live righteously and to live holy. Follow peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. Without holiness, you will not see the Lord. Be ye holy, for I am holy, saith the Lord. And, but now the person has got to that place, and you are continuing under the leading and the guiding of the Holy Spirit. Remember that often this pain, these negative emotions, these emotions that are opposing the Word of God, hate, Fear, anger, rejection, abuse, feeling ashamed, feeling guilty, which is a false guilt and a false shame, self-hate, depression, all of those terrible emotions. Remember, there is two parts The important first part we talk about here now is how do we get to the, to the root of the issue. We will lead under the leading of the Holy Spirit. Remember the Holy Spirit is there. And we will lead this person to the point of the pain. And if you've seen me minister uh, to a, a, a church congregation or even in individual ministry, of course, we lead the person to the point of the pain. Most people don't want to go to the point of the pain because that is a horrible point. That is, that is, for example, that is the incident. If we just take a, take a, a terrible um uh, let's not take two. Let's take an example of a, of an adult man who comes for ministry, and at the age of two or at the age of four, he, he was rejected, he was abandoned, if you like, let's be correct, he was abandoned by his father. And his father walked out of the house and never returned. What a terrible, terrible thing. This boy of four years old feels rejected, he feels all alone, he feels he's no good, he feels it's his fault because of the pathology that we talked about in the previous lessons. Because a child cannot differentiate between evil and how, 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 his, how could his parents possibly be evil so it must be him. And begins to blame himself. And all those emotions are 
hitting this four-year-old like a ton of bricks. Now, let's say the man is now 31 years old. Often at times you will see, this is just statistics, often at times you'll see that when a person is born again and he'll go towards his 30s, just when he starts hitting 30, most of the time that is when everything begins to surface. This is, begin, this is the point if they are already born again. And even if not, this is the, this is the place where the maturity of the soul begins to throw up, bring up all those terrible negative emotions because the body basically is suffering because of it. As you know, many diseases, illnesses, disorders in the physical, in the body, are in fact related to those emotions. Now what we do, we, we have been talking to this person, we have been ministering to this person, and much more about this later in depth, but we're just taking one example. The point of the pain of this 31-year-old man would be when he was four years old and he saw his father walk out of the house in anger and he heard the door slam like that. That would have been the most terrible moment in his life to the extent, and that is the next point, his soul split because God knew that this little four-year-old boy couldn't even handle it. And the automatic protection mechanism of God kicked in force. So here is this man having all sorts of spiritual problems and physical problems and problems in his life and problems in relationships with other people. We need to bring him to the point of the pain. We need to lead him. And sometimes we don't know what it is. In this instance, we have been talking to him and we know that this happened when he was four years old as we are as we are praying, as we are asking questions and what happened to you and the Holy Spirit begins to break the yoke and he, he feels that he's in a safe place, which he is because the Holy Spirit is there and the angels of God are encamping round about him and he begins to open up. Now we go back to the point of the pain and that part of him, that part of his soul which has that fear of rejection locked up inside of him, that false guilt, that rejection, being left alone, that nobody loves me feeling, that I'm no good, that shame and all those emotions. And we need to deal with that in the power of the Holy Spirit. And we ask him to go there. And a supernatural thing begins to happen because the Holy Spirit will supernaturally take him back there. And you might be, you might be led to lay hands at this point. You talk softly. This is not the point where you start praying loud. You're dealing with the soul you are led by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is very gentle. The Holy Spirit is very soft. The Holy Spirit is very beautiful. The Holy Spirit is, is a very quiet operator, but yet so powerful. You might be led to talk to that part of him and say what happened to you and he'll begin he'll begin to describe he'll begin to describe and it's okay because it has to come out he'll begin to describe what he saw he'll begin to describe what he feels 
And we pray for the Holy Spirit to take it away from him, for the Holy Spirit to heal those emotions and to bring truth to the lies that it wasn't his fault and it wasn't because of his actions or his behavior, but that it was his father who was at fault and that his father was actually under the influence of an evil force making him do this. And then we have to bring him to a point of forgiveness where he can forgive his father, where he can forgive himself and where he can forgive God for allowing this to happen. And you will see the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and you'll see how the Lord Jesus Christ will meet him there. Much more about that later. This is just a little flavor of things to come when we talk about inner healing. And this is a beautiful part. And this is a part where you'll see tears. This is the part where deep pain, pain that has been buried for years or decades, begins to well up. And often at times I am, I am moved and led by the Holy Spirit to lay hands and to to call forth and to call out the pain that is buried in the soul for those many, many years. And, and as, as we lay hands on the sick, and this, in this part of broken soul, is a, 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 it is, it is a, a also something broken, and we lay hands on the sick, we, we, we call forth the pain and and for it to go to the Holy Spirit and for the Holy Spirit to take it, all of a sudden you will, you will see an eruption of all those emotions and the person might scream and hallow because all of a sudden, finally, under the power of the Holy Ghost, it is released and whew, it comes out and it, it, it can be loud and it can be, it, it can be those screams that, that you feel it in your bones. But you know the Holy Ghost is releasing that person from all that baggage. And instant healing normally takes place because that was actually the cause of the physical Ill, illness and problems they were having. Um, more about that later. Things to look out for here at this point is some people are on some people are um, using psychotropic drugs or they are using um, drugs medication used for depression heavy forms of depression like Prozac and all those kind of medications especially those that they use for uh, people that they diagnose as schizophrenics um, those are or people that hear voices and yeah that is normally classed as schizophrenics um, that can actually hinder and make it more difficult because those medications they they stabilize the mind they those people they will tell you they can't be happy and they can't be sad so they are like a plant they are just in the middle and it is very difficult to minister to people that are on very strong medication like that medications that are actually taking over the mind that are they're making everything level so there's no joy, there's no sadness, there's just a line of nothing. And um, it is very difficult for them to express their emotions because all their emotions are medically suppressed by those drugs. And again, the Holy Spirit will lead you in what to do. We pray always, if a person is on medication, um, we don't tell them to come off the medication, of course, because we are not medical doctors. And we are certainly not their medical doctor and um, that is not our place to do so. If the Lord wants them to come off the medication, then the Lord is able and willing to speak to the person 
or to use prophecy and confirm it through another prophecy and make it very clear that it's the Lord's will. And often a time the Lord has already spoken to these people, praise God. But we, we bind every side effect from any medication. This doesn't happen too often, but it does happen. Um, and sometimes you are up against a demon that is blocking them to release their emotions. And some spiritual warfare and more ministry is necessary to deal with that so that that spirit can be temporarily put in prison because it can't be cast out yet because as you know now it has a le it has a it has a, it is a stronghold it is holding on to those emotions that's its right to stay so it will stop and prevent the person from releasing those emotions or even go there to the point of the pain because that is his right to stay so he'll make it very difficult so you need to come against that demon and bind that demon we have the power to bind the keys of the kingdom are given to us and we have the power to bind and to lose we lose the grace of god we lose the power of god we lose the anointing of the holy spirit upon that person and we bind every power and ability of every demon spirit to come against the ministry to this person in Jesus name and soon you'll see that demon being bound up we ask angels of God to put it in a prison so that it, it cannot do any of its tricks so that we can deal with the soul of the person and later on as we this is only the basic we're just talking about the foundation and we you'll see that we are also using Hebrews 4 verse 12 literally and we are nearly going on to the fourth pillar but in closing as we are still looking at the inner healing part praise the Lord this is where we use Hebrews 4 verse 12 literally the word of God is quick and powerful sharper than any two-edged sword piercing even the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of joint and marrow and is a discerner of the thoughts and that are in the hearts of man so we take that literally and we take the word of god which is the sword of the spirit and we say we minister to the person, we divide soul and spirit, and we lay aside the spirit. Because we are wanting to deal with the soul. And if we lay aside the spirit and everything that is spirit, we are dealing with the soul. And the Lord authenticates it. And we are at that point able to deal with the soul and not... And, and the spirits are not interfering because they are literally laid aside. We have literally, we've took it literally and the Lord has authenticated every single time each and any of us do this. Because this is a revelation of Hebrews 4 and 12. This is one of those layers. Praise God. Hallelujah. So much more, much more on this very important element, inner healing and and, and everything, how, how we go from step one to two to three to four, everything, everything is of course under the leading of the Holy Spirit. And we don't work according to a structure. We don't work according to, you know, we work according to the Holy Spirit. But God is a God of order, praise the Lord. And he gives us a way that is successful because he is the way and he knows the way and he is the only way and he shows us that way. And, and, we, and we apply what he teaches us. We apply the principles. So when we know from the Holy Spirit and the Word of God, uh, still being under the leading of the Holy Spirit, what we need to do, and then we apply it, and he authenticates it and follows it up with signs, wonders, miracles, restoration of the person. Praise God. So we are, we are going much more in depth on that later on. 
We're moving on to the fourth element, but we do that on another tape. Praise the Lord.